CIA, motivation, prayer, instruction, and action. We're in the month of November. Of course, I deem November couples ministry, or should I say couples month, because uh, we started with the Stevens. Last week was the Lobans. Now, this week, we have the Bartleys. And of course, I know they will be sharing a powerful word with us tonight, and they will be ministering to us. But I must say congratulations to Apostle Dwight Bartley and my cousin, Keely Bartley, Minister Bartley. Good morning to you both, and welcome to Love 101. Good morning, good. Minister Roshane. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, everyone. All right, so they're excited. They're excited. They're a young couple, you know. So last week we had a couple that I think they got um, uh, married uh, maybe like about um, 2012 or 2013, somewhere there. But they're a young couple. I think they got married in 2017. So they are three years. They just recently celebrated their anniversary in October. And of course, uh, they were recently appointed uh, new, new offices. Um, in the kingdom. And um, I'm really happy for them. And I'm really happy that I chose them even before they were appointed in their new offices. You know, I chose them from September, but God was up to something which I didn't understand. And I'm really giving God thanks for that, that I was led. And it's truly a blessing to have you both. And I know that God will indeed bless you both as you minister the word tonight. So just before you minister the word, just introduce yourself to the listeners of Love 101, and of course, those viewing on the various social media platforms. Of course, we're now live on Facebook, and a little later on, I'll be posting it on YouTube. So go ahead. Good morning, everyone, listeners and viewers. It is indeed a wonderful privilege to be here on MPIA with Minister Roshan Douglas. It is indeed an honor. I would just want to say thanks to Minister Douglas for sharing this platform with us. We are really um, grateful for this opportunity. My name is Apostle Dwight Bartley, and with me is my beautiful wife, and I'm going to give her that opportunity to introduce herself. Hi, good morning again, everyone. Good morning, Minister Douglas. He's my dear cousin. Um, it's just really yes, a privilege. First cousin. First cousin. <laughs> yes, first cousin. Glory to God. So my name is Minister Keely Mackenzie Bartley. Um, as my husband stated previously, we are honored to be sharing um, on this program on tonight, this morning, that is, um, MPIA, where we're going to be discussing marriage. Interesting. Go ahead. Okay, so um, what we realize that in this time and season, we realize that there are a lot of marriages that they're actually falling apart and a lot of broken homes are, are now being um, created as a result of that. And um, what we wanted to share with you, the, the topic that we want to speak on um, this morning is the reality of marriage, because we believe that most persons are not prepared for the reality of marriage. It's usually a perception of what we hope marriage is or what we want marriage to be. So we want to speak a little bit on the reality, which we believe that will um, prepare. Oh, I accidentally unmuted um, your mic. So just unmute it for me, please. Sorry about that. All right, you may, all right. So they're up and running again. Sorry about that listeners. And of course they're still speaking. Yeah, so what, we, what I was saying previously is that uh, my husband and I, we really wanted to speak on the reality of marriage because there's usually a perception of what we hope or what we think marriage should be. And what we really want to dig into this morning is just the reality of it, what you're going to get when you're in your marriage and how you can go ahead to move over those challenges. So we just want to really establish that marriage is a really a beautiful thing. It's really beautiful to share your, your, your life with someone who loves you and someone that you love and just to build memories. So um, what we usually see, and this is based on conversation and personal experience, is that some of the times that we, we tend to have this perception and the perception will include um, the, 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 the idea of that we think that marriage is really perfect. 
and when we get married, we're going to be happy and everything is going to go well once it's the will of God. We're just going to ride through. Everything is going to be absolutely right. easy. Um, and um, we're going to have a family, whether it be in a year or two. And we, we put timeline on, on things. And what we realize is that things might not go the way that you want it to go or how you really expected it to go because there is that deep reality that you'll get in when you get married. So um, the reality is really about, it comes with a lot of negative and positive. I'm going to say marriage is filled with great things, great um, memories. And, but also what we want to, to discuss this morning is that it comes with um, also negative or challenges. And what you are going to really have to do is you're going to have to work your way through these challenges. So we come to the, 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 the conclusion that marriage is a lot of work. That's right. Because when you look on marriage, as my wife stated earlier on, a lot of persons have the perception and say, oh, yeah, um, when we get married, we're going to go on nice vacation, nice dates and nice outings, but we're not really focused on the, you know, the negatives that it comes with. So what I said to my wife um, earlier on today is that what the Lord laid on my spirit is that um, marriage is actually, when you think about marriage, marriage is, is actually, it comes with a whole package. It comes with the negative and it comes with the positive. So as I said to my wife, I said to her that I said that I believe that a lot of persons um, think that marriage is not only having on a, a fancy gown or a nice suit or having a big ceremony or driving in a nice limousine, inviting a lot of crowd. That is just the wedding, but that is not marriage. Marriage is actually two imperfect persons coming together as one with different background, with different attitude, with different characteristics. And these things can pose a challenge. And once the challenge comes, you're going to have disagreements. You're going to have conflict. You're going to have arguments. So persons cannot only center their mind around perfection and not thinking that there, there's going to be imperfection because there are going to be disappointments. There, there, there are going to come a time when argument will arise for different reasons, you know, because when you enter into a marriage, you're not going to see the side of the individual that you have never actually seen before, but you would, would have to learn how to deal with that aspect of that individual. Um, for example, my, my wife, my wife, when we when we just got married, she realized that I have <laughs> she realized that I have a habit, and this is something that she discovered. Um, I never knew that women on a whole, um, based on conversations, I never knew that women on a whole doesn't like when you use the, the the toilet in the bathroom. They doesn't like when you leave it open, and so I have a habit of leaving it open, and so that is something that kind of turn off my wife. So she constantly keep on reminding me, saying, honey, could you please close the toilet seat whenever time you open it? And not only that, she doesn't like to see things out of place. You know, she loves to see when I put things in place. Uh, uh, like, for example, when I come in from work and I leave my shoes um, on the outside, she would say, hon, could you please put your shoes on the veranda in this section? But it is something that I totally forgot at times. But what I do is that um, I try my very best to make things work by heeding to what my wife said, you know, try to work on that kind of habit that I have of leaving things out of place and leaving the toilet seat open. You know, I try to make things work. So what I'm basically saying is that I try to stay committed to whatever is actually um, affecting my wife. Not only those things, those are just examples. You see, what we're actually saying is that you have to be committed to work on certain behavior that you see that is um, causing your spouse to feel uncomfortable. You cannot just pretend as if to say, okay, um, this is you and this is how you're gonna stay. It cannot work. You have to learn 
to, to be committed to say, okay, I want my marriage to work. So whatever is causing your spouse, it might not be leaving the tight seat open as I do or leaving my shoe out of place. It might be something else. But as long as it is affecting your spouse, you have to be committed and also willing to change, to make things work. That is how you will have a successful marriage. And that is one of the things I have to learn to work with. And so as my wife, you know, I, I, I am still trying to be that perfect person. I'm still trying to work on that. And a lot of um, habits that I do have, I'm still trying to stay committed to work because I, my wife is my everything. I tell her every day, I cannot do without her. You know, the first time I saw her, I was, <laughs> I was blown away, you know, by the beauty, by her intellect. And I can't afford to lose such a treasure. You know, she's my treasure and I can't afford to lose my treasure. If you don't want to lose your treasure, I'm, I'm speaking on for the men, those who are expecting to get married and those who are already married. You know, you have to learn to be committed, man. Work on some things that you know that is causing conflict or you know that is causing argument. You know, try to be the one to cease from doing certain things because he that find that a wife find a good thing. She is my good thing. So if you don't want to lose your good thing, follow the right Bartley and be committed to change whatever habit is causing um any conflict between your spouse. Amen. So they say yes. a happy life, a happy wife is a happy life. And I totally agree. But um, what my husband said, I totally endorse. Um, as we said, it, it requires a lot of work. Um, you're going to have to identify um, that flaw that is within you. And when you're identifying that flaw, and this is something that we've learned over the three years that we've been married, um, sometimes why marriages, they do not work is that you will identify a, a flaw in your spouse, but you're not identifying the flaw in yourself. But in marriage, it has to be a two-way street, basically, because you would have to identify the flaw that is in your husband or, the, or your wife, and you also have to identify the flaw that is within yourself. So sometimes what will cause conflict is that someone will say to the other person that you need to change and you need to do this. But sometimes we have to ask ourselves the question, um, what am I doing to, 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 to create that, um, that, that, that perfect union? Because sometimes it's not just the other person that has flaws. Sometimes you have a flaw. And because you're only seeing the other person's flaw and you're not fixing yourself, that is going to pose a challenge. The Bible says that we should pick the beam out of your own eye before you pluck it out of somebody else's eye. And when your husband, I believe that when your husband sees that or your spouse see that you're really working on yourself. And as my husband shared that, um, that example, um, that he's trying to put his shoes together because he knows that's something that I really appreciate. When he does not do it, I now have to learn to be patient with him because you have to also understand that change does not come overnight. Once your spouse identifies some flaws in themselves and they're committed and they express to you that they're willing to work it through, we have to be patient enough to help them get to that place where they overcome. So um, sometimes what happens is that we pressure the other person to get it right. But we have to understand that for marriage to work, we have to exercise a level of patience because I know that we're not here to live forever, but there's, it's a journey and it's not a, it's not a 100 meter, it's going to be a marathon. So we're gonna have to fix things over time. And with the reality of marriage and the perception is that we think that when God sends that person, they come to you perfect. That's not the case. No one is going to be perfect. Even when you try to fix each other's flaws, you're still not going to be perfect. So we have to learn now to understand or change our mindset 
that your spouse will never become perfect. But there are some things that we're going to have to compromise That's right. to make your marriage work. Compromising, and we're not saying that you're going to do something outside of the will of God. It's still going to be in, a bibl in biblical alignment, but you're going to compromise to make your marriage work. That's right. Uh, for the Bible declare also that all have sinned and come short of the glory. We cannot call that out. So the fact that all have sinned and come short of the glory, the Bible had already told us that no man is perfect. So don't look for a perfect man or a perfect woman. There is always going to be something that will trigger you off or something that will tickle your spirit because the devil will always create ways for us to, you know, to for conflict and problem to arise. But God had already given us the, the tool, yes. you know, to deal with these challenges. And, and that is what we are saying. Stay committed, um, you know, being patient. Um, don't compromise. Amen. Amen. Don't compromise. Of course, I don't want to stop you guys in the midst of you speaking in a book. I, I hear a touch on a topic, the reality of marriage, the reality. It's a real thing. It's not a fairy tale. It's not what you see on the movies. It's not the, the good ending story that you always see on the movies where the husband and wife kissing and everybody looking happy and they're jumping the broom and all of that lovely stuff. It's a reality. And the fact that you touched on that topic, I really want to understand the reality of marriage in a situation like what we're going through now. It's we're in a pandemic. It's not the easiest time for couples at this time. You know, maybe there are some husbands losing their jobs, wife not earning enough money, husband not earning enough money. So we want to know the reality of marriage. How do you deal with things like that in a marriage when things become real when you know when you look in the house there's no food husband looking at wife wife looking at husband you know no sometimes some simple commodities some simple stuff you can't find it how do you cope with stuff like that especially in a pandemic so i want to know the reality of what's happening to you guys now and what you would have heard about other couples and how can you motivate couples and not just couples but individuals especially in a time like this because as of course uh some of the couples that came on recently they spoke about unity strength they spoke about it's not a competition it's all about completion so i really want to hear your side of the story as it relates to the reality of marriage because you touched on the topic so i want you guys to be real with us this morning all right so um as it relates to your question minister um, I totally understand um, the time that we're living in. It's a pandemic. Um, the reality is your spouse might be laid off, might be unemployed, but at the end of the day, the reality is at the end of the day is that we have to remember that we actually made a vow bef before God and man. And the, the, the vow would actually state that in better or for worse. So even if we're not able to, 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 to afford what we usually afford, um, used to afford, we have to understand that this is going to be a partnership that we have dedicated ourselves to for a lifetime. And I believe that um, even when things get rough, we, we, as even children of God, we're able to speak and declare some things. And even when we're going through a rough time, you have to understand that with a vow, you have to stick it through. You have to ride out your storm because it's, the, the, the songwriter say it won't be um, like this always. So even for those that are going through a pandemic right now and you, you financially, there is a strain in your household. We want to encourage you that you have to still ride out your storm. It doesn't matter if your husband isn't working. It doesn't matter if your wife isn't working. God is able to provide. And it won't always be like this. And even if it is like this, this is something that we have committed to. And we'd have to take the vows that we made before God. Because the, I believe it said that thy vows is upon me, O Lord, until death. And until death, we're going to have to, even if we're, we will have to struggle our way, way, way through, 
we'll have to do so as a team. So it's a teamwork. And the teamwork will, will help you to, 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 to really go over the challenges when you work together as a team. That's right, because if I could add real quick, um, as you stated, how are we managing in this time, knowing that a lot of persons have lost their businesses and jobs and so forth, and the income is not as how it used to. Um, one of the things I understand that my wife, um, she did not marry me for what I can give to her, but she married me for who I am. And, and that is what she displayed before we even got married. So even in the time of pandemic, nothing changes. And I'm so appreciative of that. You know, things are rough, things are tough, but because of the love that she has for me, she said, okay, hon, even if you're not working, I'm still going to stand by you. Even if you're, you're not earning as much money as you used to, I'm still going to stand by you. A lot of persons, when they began to act up because things go down financially and things are not going as how it used to, especially on the, the male side, you know, some women tend to get timid and get, you know, miserable and, and so forth. That is a sign to say, well, then, boy, you marry the person for what they can give and not for who the person is. And that can be a problem. So in that case, I did marry my wife for who she is, and she did marry me for who I am. And that is what is keeping us up until this day. I tell you, we have been having a rough time, especially on my side. Let me be real, as you ask me, especially on my side as the man. Things has been really rough for minute for Dwight Barkley. But this, my beautiful wife, she encourages me. She motivated me. She let me know that there is still hope. You know, she constantly keep reminding me in the word that all hope is not lost. I remember she saying to me, as long as you're breathing, as long as you're, 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 you're still in motion, there is still hope for you. And I believe in you, my husband. And I know you can make it. As a couple of months, if you if motivate on a spouse, encourage. encourage them. Let them know that, guess what? Things might not be working out now, but in the long... Because to be honest, you know, Minister Douglas, all some spouse need, especially the men, is a little motivation. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yes. A little encouragement. You see, a marriage cannot be complete if there is no encouragement. That's right. If there is no motivation. A marriage is actually not a marriage if you cannot encourage your spouse. They're, saying, tell the, you. they're saying the M in the marriage it speaks of motivation, you say. That's what you're saying. Thank you. No, you're talking <laughs> with me. Yes, man. So the little piece of M is a little motivation. For those who are out there in this time and you're having a challenging time, don't be discouraged. Yes. Also, remember what the word of the Lord said. And this is what also kept us, if you want to ask us, the reason why we're still standing, especially in this pandemic, as we were going to state it earlier on, is prayer. Yes. Prayer is what actually keeping us. And prayer is actually what can keep our marriage. Also, the Bible said the fervent, effective prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So what we do, we understand that the devil don't like marriage. And so the devil will always come in a little subtle way and try to create enmity between the two, the two individuals, yes. you know, and try to separate them in whatever way he possibly can. Yes. But once you pray and know what the word of God declare, you know, the word of the Lord said, David declare, I have yes. never seen the righteous forsaken or is seen begging bread. Yes. And I want to say to somebody, mm -hmm. if you never beg for bread last year, you're not going to beg for bread in this time of pandemic. Come on. The same God that brought you out is the same God that is going to bring you out. If Minister Douglas permit me here, I feel the spirit of God. Go I say, go ahead, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. I'm here to tell someone who are listening right now, if God did it for you last year, he's going to do it for you this year because he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. So don't worry yourself about this pandemic because when this pandemic is over, God is going to give you double for your trouble. I feel the glory of God right here. I'm here to tell someone tonight who is listening, you're worrying how your business are going to turn out. You're worrying how you're going to um, get some financial breakthrough to clear some bills that you're hoeing but God said don't worry yourself David said I will look unto the hills from whence cometh my help because my help 
cometh from the Lord. And I'm here to tell someone tonight that your help cometh from the Lord. Come I on. keep on telling my wife that our help cometh from the Lord. Yes. And God is not going to cause us, especially in this time of pandemic, to go hungry. My Hallelujah. God. He will sustain us. It's just like the children of Israel. Before they, God brought them into captivity, God had already told them that they were going into captivity. But the Lord said he will keep them. He will sustain them and they will not die. And I can tell someone yes. this morning that you will not die Come in on. the mighty name of Hallelujah. Jesus. You will not go hungry in Jesus. the mighty name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Just remember this. Weeping may endure only for a night, can I say, this pandemic is only for a season. Yes. It is not a permanent thing, Come but on. it is a temporal thing. Can I say it again? This pandemic is not a permanent thing. Yes. It's only a temporal thing. But when this pandemic is over, you had one job, watch God work out two jobs for you. That's the God that we serve. You know, I was saying to my wife the other day that there is a reason why God allowed this pandemic to come and the world at large. Because you see, Minister Douglas, we have to be cognizant of the fact that there are a lot of persons who have been idling and not paying attention to the signs and the time. There are a lot of persons who have been depending on their business, on their finance, you know, and they're not much uh, paying attention okay. to God. Yes. They're not taking the time out with God. You know, a lot of persons think that they can only survive on their money and they don't need God. So what God had to do is to allow the pandemic to come so that you can have no money, no job that you're depending on. Who can you look to in this time? You can't look to your money. You can't look to your job. You have to look to God, the author and the finisher of your faith. And if I can pause to say this real quick also, as the Lord instruct me just now, my God, someone out there, you might have some business ideas. Right. You might have some dreams for 2020. And you have been prophesied to that by July this year. Things are going to go the way that you want it to go. And you have been questioning God, saying, God, why is it that I have been prophesied to and you told me that this year will be better? But this pandemic now is in place. Things seem to get worse. God is saying, don't worry yourself. Yes. The blessing I have for you, it is delayed, but it not is not denied. denied. You see, the blessing I have for you, it is only on the shelf. I have to put it on the shelf, put it on the shelf for a while because I have to give Jamaica a wake-up call. I have to give the world a wake-up call That's that right. it is not my will for any to perish, but all may have everlasting life. So your blessing is just on the shelf. God said, just wait on me. Just trust me. But when this pandemic is over, and when I feel as if my people has now heard my voice, when this pandemic pass, the blessing that I have for you on the shelf, I'm not going to take it back off the shelf and give it to you, but I'm going to double it up. My God. Expect to get double for your trouble yes. in this season. Watch God and trust him and watch him work on your behalf. Amen. 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 Powerful words indeed. Oh my goodness. I am so excited. I'm excited about this pandemic, you know, because it, it has been the best time for me spiritually in a while. Let me say that in a while, because I, I said to myself recently, like my life is like a basketball game. I use that analogy because a basketball game has 12, I think it's 12 minutes per, per quarter. I, I, there are four quarters in a basketball game, but one thing I've noticed in a basketball game, because it's 48 minutes and also 12 times four is 48. But sometimes when I'm watching a basketball game, it takes three hours and I'm saying, how does a basketball game that should have ended in 48 minutes take three or two hours at times? The reason why it takes so long is because they take a lot of timeouts and timeouts are strategic. No, this, yes. this pandemic, it has allowed us to strategically take a time out. We take time out to know our spouses. We take time yes. out to, to, to understand our wives because a lot of us wives are working from home. Husbands are working from home. So we get to understand a different side. I see my wife working sometimes from home and I see that she's actually busy at home just as though she usually tell me sometime when I call her at work, she said, honey, honey I'm busy now, can't talk, no. And even when she's at home, 
I tried to get her attention. She said, honey, I'm busy. Can't talk. No, because guess what? She's doing her work and I, I appreciate her more because of what I'm seeing. I'm seeing the reality. Now, not only that, but one of the things that I've learned, as you said, man of God earlier, that I've learned so much to depend on God. And I've seen God provide for me. I've seen, oh, you know, man. there are times when, you know, I'm at home, you know, I, I'm just being real. I can't sleep because I'm saying, God, I really need some financial help because I'm seeing where, you know, I run low on petrol and I'm saying, God, I need to get to work and there's no petrol in the car. And I'm saying, God, what can I do? You know, send some help, you know, you know, lead somebody to, to, to be a blessing to me. And, I, and I'm there ministering to God and I'm saying, God, I don't want to beg. I don't want to look like, you know, I'm, you know, things are not going well because it's not that I have pride or anything like that, but I've learned in this season to depend on God, to lean on God. And I'm seeing where in recent times where just, just yesterday I ended a seven day fasting. You know, I was fasting about something in particular. And it's on this morning, I realized that God gave me the answer to the fasting that I was fasting about. I saw scripture in the book of Proverbs and I'm saying the exact thing that I fasted about is in the Bible. So sometimes we think situations in our lives, it's, it mirrors what's happening in the Bible. Because we can say that when the children of Israel were going through the, 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 the wilderness or the desert, they were going through a pandemic because God was the one that was keeping them. God was on. the one that provided the manna for them in the morning. God was the one that did that for them. God was the one that did this for them. So we have to understand that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. The word of God says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And God has spoke through these two lovely individuals you know and as i said i know them very well i'm really excited it's the first time i'm getting to hear my cousin keely i didn't know that she has so much word in her i didn't know that she was actually a motivational speaker because you know we relate to each other on a family basis but this time we're relating to each other on a ministerial basis and i'm really excited to hear god speaking through you and i'm really excited to hear you man of god you know i hope i can get to sit in a service or guess what i'll be introduced i'll be into inviting this man of god again just to share a word for you inside MPIA, maybe sometime next year. I don't know exactly when, but I'll tell you more about that. But I'm really excited about the reality of marriage. Marriage is a real thing. Marriage is like electricity. Sometimes you don't see it, but if you don't be careful, you can get shocked. You know, it can be, it can be, it can go to your brain. It can be, it can cause you to have mental illnesses. It can cause you to be on the job and you can't focus. You know, I, 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 I got a message. I got a message for one of my supervisors, you know, and, and I know she's listening. I want to say hello to you, boss lady. Won't call her name because of certain reasons. But I remember there was a time when I had some issues, you know, in my marriage, you know, and I was at work and I was saying to her, oh, I said, boy, I can't focus, man, you know. This thing, I get to me, this thing, you know, I can't think, think straight. So it's like it affected how I functioned on the job. So I told her that I was going to take a day from work. And she, and she said, okay, I'm going to take it out of your days. And she said, no problem. Go home and clear your mind. Because that's how life is. Sometimes because of this pandemic, it has allowed us to understand our spouses. Women don't like to see things out of place. My wife is the same thing. You know, she reminds me sometimes. She even called me and said, all right, come on, move this, you know. And I, and I heard you mention about patience and um, as, as spouses, we have to be willing to adjust. You know, um, you mentioned commitment. Another word that we can use there is adjusting, you know, willing to be adjust. You know, sometimes even when my wife is not around, I hear her voice speaking to me like, move this, take up the shoes or shame. And I'm saying she's not there, no, but I still hear her voice. So even though sometimes I remember um, there was a time when my wife went to the Bahamas and even while she was in the Bahamas, I could still hear her speaking to me when I left things out of place because I had a chance to be single for three weeks. <laughs> but you know, the principle was still there. I could still hear her speaking to me. And that's how the word of God is. When you study the word of God, when you live by God's word, you will still hear God speaking to you. The Bible says, how can a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed to the word of God. How can a husband have a good wife? By taking heed to the word of your wife. You need to listen to your wives. Husband, I've learned it, you know. I've learned this very, I don't know if it's a theology or, or, or a Mariology. 
I call it Mariology. Let's you let's come on. That's the word. <laughs> Mariology. Husbands, listen to your wife because I've I've been down the road many times where I have you know did some things or I tried to figure things out myself and say, all right, I figure out a way. And I said, all right, this is a way. And my wife said to you, honey, I don't think this is a way, no. Because yes. what we think we know, sometimes they're seeing more than what we are seeing. And sometimes we go ahead and we make the mistake and then we come back and we say, boy, oh, you know, honey, I have to humble myself in a book. We should have listened to you. And I say, yeah, yes. Yes. my wife always say, oh, see so all this woman. You go, you go, go to everybody else. You, know, you listen to everybody else. I mean, I love from mom and me, I tell you. So this is the case and you weren't listening. So we have to listen to each other. You know, we have to be committed and single people, you have to listen to God. You know, yes. if you're not committed to a relationship with God, no, you know, if you're not diligent in prayer, if you're not diligent in fasting, because that was what my wife saw in me. She saw somebody that was devoted to God. And she said, you know what? I like this young man, you know, he loves God and he's committed to, you know, the things of God. He's always praying. He's always called upon, you know, he's, he, put his, he put himself together, you know, and that's another thing, you know, sometimes when we get married, we kind of get laid back the husband gets laid back, the wife gets laid back. But we have to put ourselves together just the same as all we used to keep ourselves together when we were yes. seeking um, our spouses, you know. And so there's a lot to say. There's a lot to say. It's not my platform to speak as it relates to MPIA. I have the Bartleys with me tonight. I'm really excited. You're tuned to Love 101, the family station. It's now um, seven minutes after one o'clock. I promised Minister Bartley that I wouldn't have them on very long. Um, you know, my listeners, they will be calling in, in a short while. I'll be opening the phone lines. Um, um, we have a new system here at Love, you know. So God is doing a new thing here at Love. So I kind of had to adjust in terms of how I broadcast my Facebook Live. So I had to close the WhatsApp a while ago. I'll be opening the WhatsApp. Remember, the WhatsApp number is 876-997-3125. Uh, of course, it's MPIA, Motivation, Prayer, Instruction, and Action. And I know there are many persons I've seen here. I'm seeing some um, requests coming in um, from Facebook. Um, some persons would have sent in their voice notes. I'm going to play a few. Uh, start by playing this one. Let's hear this one. Good night. My name is Joni. I'm calling from Montego Bay. I'm requesting prayer for my eyes. Please, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So we're going to take note of these. Some persons are asking for financial breakthroughs. Well, let's hear what Miss Olive has to say. Good morning. Please pray for me. My name is Olive Barnett. That God will continue to strengthen and heal my body and give me the strength to do my little chores as I don't have anybody to really help me with yeah. these things right now. Yes. Please pray that God will continue to do these things and bless me. Oh, He's yeah. blessing me and I thank him, I love him. All right, bless you, Miss Olive. All right, another person here um, praying for salvation for their children. Um, praying for healing and prosperity. Uh, this one also says, I'm praying. Um, I've done an interview Friday, and they said they will call me some persons, some persons in the week, and I'm hoping I will get the call. All right. So somebody got an interview, and they're hoping that they were selected or they were shortlisted. All right. Another one says um, she's praying for those who are mourning. Uh, let, let us pray. Remember those who are mourning at this time, uh, the loss of a loved one. Of course, the phone lines will be open in a short while. Uh, let me play another request here. Good morning, Brother Roshane. Just here tuning in. I just listen, Minister Keely. Hi, Minister Keely and Minister uh, Apostle Bartlett. Yes, I'm here on the work. I'm just tuning in and listen what you say. Although I'm a single person, I just listen and tune in. Blessings. Well, well uh, I don't like you to classify yourself as a single person in a place. <laughs> You're a potential husband, a potential yeah. husband. Let us let us put it that way. Speak prophetic, yeah. my brother. <laughs> <laughs> and now I use this 
this I am, this morning. I, I am well. I'm asking you to pray for me that I may try to do a, even a two-day fasting because I need some prayer. I need Father to pray for me because my um, my aunt has I've lost my aunt. So oh. uh, sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that, my sister. Uh, Sister Claudette, we're praying for you, my dear. Uh, this one says, greetings, man of God and woman of God. I am not married, but I want to be married. Vernon from Kingston, he's praying for marriage. All right. Praying that God will open your eyes. Praying that God will give you that 2020 vision so you can see that 2020 wife. All right. Prayer requests for backsliders. Backsliders to come back to God. God is able, as the song says, he's able indeed. This one from Terry. My name is Terry, and I'm requesting prayer for my spiritual strength as well as my success for a project that I'm working on at work. This one says, good morning. I want to pray for me and my family. God bless you. Always keep doing the good work. I'm not seeing a name here, but blessings to you. And of course, there are some messages coming on Facebook. As I said, it's a different system. It's not the, 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 the regular system that I'm accustomed to. So I, I'm trying my best to multitask as best as possible. The phone lines are buzzing already. Phone lines are actually buzzing already. But let me take this first caller. Uh, I think that person went already. So before we take the call, before we go to the phone lines tonight, I really want um, the man of God just to pray a general prayer. And, and um, or the woman of God, because you, you both can decide who prays and and, and, and what's not you know i'm not the one dictating anything you know your 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 guys are, are are in control all right so basically um it's mpia motivation prayer instruction and action um you would have given that motivational word um you know you'll be praying a general prayer in a short while but also is there anything god is saying as it relates to instruction because the bible says that faith without works is dead Oftentimes we hear the word, we hear we, our faith is activated, but we do nothing. We sit down at our faith, not activating, not acting upon our faith. And sometimes there are persons who, who are not leaders. There are persons who are not persons who are, are persons that can take themselves up and do things. They have to be instructed. You have to tell them, all right, you need to go and drink some water. You need to open the fridge. You need to jump over the building that type of thing. So we want to hear what God is saying as it relates to the topic you spoke about or just generally what God is saying to you as it relates to instructions in the now. So whichever one you want to do first, whether you want to pray first or you want to release the instructions and then immediately following that, we'll open the phone lines, all right? You okay, made the definitely. Um, it's just, as I can only to say, it's just like when you're going to school, um, learning the theory, theory alone will not work. You have to do the practical. And it is through the practical you're going to know if things is complete. So you have to start taking action in whatever situation, yes. you know, especially in this time of pandemic, you cannot only sit down and say, okay, God is going to fall manna from heaven and, and it is going to perfect your marriage. You know, you have to go out there and seek, you know, seek help in the sense of um, source of a job to see if you can get some income, you know, not only sitting down and praying and saying that, oh God, I'm waiting on you. You know, if Abraham had waited and did not step out by faith, then he would not have ended up into the promised land. And if you want to end up into your promised land, you have to get up from where you are, step out by faith. As the man of God stated earlier on that, faith without work is dead. So you have to start taking action, not only listening, but you have to also do action. And when you begin to do the action, that is when you're going to see results. You cannot see results actually by only listening, but you can see the action when you begin to take action, start to, to do the things that you're also, you are supposed to be doing. So I want to encourage someone today, start putting action in place, um, start to do what you have to do. You know, as we, as we even said that the reality is um, when you enter into marriage, that is where the reality begins. You know, start to, to, to change that behavior, start to, to, to work upon it, you know, and start to act upon it also, you know, to, to say, okay, I am willing to change and I am willing to do what is right to make 
my marriage a success. And that is what I have to be. Um, I'm, I'm learning to do, um, not only locking down the, the toilet seat or putting my shoe in place, but there are other issues that do arise that my wife is not comfortable with. And so I, I don't only want to be doing um, word speaking, yes. um, speaking from my lips, because a lot of times we want to speak from our lips, but what are you doing? You need to start doing something so that your wife or your spouse, whoever the, um, the person um, you're having the challenge with can say, okay, at least um, my husband or my wife is willing to change yes. because I am seeing now where yes. action is now taking place, where he's now readjusting things and he's willing to, to make a change. So definitely you cannot only um, speak or say, I am going to, you know, stop saying I am going to and just do it. Yes. A lot of, that is what is kind of holding back a lot of marriages and life on the whole. You know, I am going to. But if you don't get up and do it, then you're not going to get it done. You know, mm. you have to move immediately. You know, don't wait until next year. Don't wait until you see an opportunity present itself. Move. It is only when you move, then you're going to see that opportunity. You're not going to see that opportunity if you're sitting down. You have to move in order to see that opportunity to grab it. So you have to be willing to take action and make things work, definitely. So my wife is gonna pray this time. Hallelujah. Father God, we bless you tonight, this morning. We praise you, we magnify your name because you are God and you are God all by yourself. Father, oh God Almighty, as we've heard the requests of your people tonight, Oh God, so many persons are asking for prayer because of healing and breakthrough, deliverance, salvation. And Father God Almighty, before they would have asked of it, mighty God, you've, you would have actually known the, the request yes, of their Jesus. heart. So Father God Almighty, we understand the prayer, oh God Almighty, of coming in, the power of coming into agreement. And we come into agreement with every request that has been placed before you tonight. Father God, your word declares that it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit. So by your spirit, yes, divine Jesus. God, we pray that you'll begin to move upon every prior request that has been lifted up oh god almighty to you mighty god as you move upon the the spirit of the the water mighty god i pray holy spirit of the living god that you'll begin to move upon yeah, every gosh, sickness gosh, and disease yes. man father god we declare mighty double shame right that you will now. dry up mighty god everything that is unlike god that My is in the god. body of your people father god we, we take authority yes, mighty Jesus. god right now over the your, the body of your people and we declare healing because you said in your word that healing is your children's bread. Father God, we declare instantaneous healing right now from the crown of in their the heads to the very sole of their feet, mighty God. Father God, we pray, Holy Spirit of the living God, My for God. those that are asking for salvation for their children, for their their mother, whoever it be, mighty God, whether it be a family member or a co-worker, Father God, your word declares yes, that none Jesus. can come unless you draw them. And Father God, we pray that even tonight you'll begin to draw, In oh God the Almighty, the of hearts Jesus. of men unto you, mighty God. We declare that yokes will be broken this morning by virtue of the anointing. Amen. We declare Lord, divine Lord. deliverance. Yes. Father God, even during this pandemic, we declare and decree God Almighty that you release mighty God supernaturally, oh God, to your people. Father God, we declare mighty yes, God Jesus. that every plans of the enemy, oh God, concerning your people, concerning this nation shall be aborted this morning in the name of Jesus as we come into divine agreement. Yes. We declare and we decree God Almighty that it will be done in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, touch every request mighty God. Do not leave one unanswered, but we declare God Almighty Almighty, even for that person that, oh God Almighty, has done an interview, Holy Spirit, uh, we declare that favor, oh God Almighty, will respond for that person, even now, mighty God, and uh, they will receive a call this week in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Remove every hindrance, Jesus. remove every blockage, mighty God, from your people, and we claim all of this done right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for breakthrough. We thank you for 
yes. healing. We thank you for victory and we give you the glory. We give you the honor and we give you the, the praise in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. Powerful indeed. And of course, the phone lines are now open. But listen to me, listeners. I really, God has been speaking to me over the weekend. And um, it's funny enough that we, we have been through a journey starting the month of January. We started off in the month of January. I gave you the book of Isaiah 40, verse 31. God gave me that scripture for 2020. And I didn't understand what that scripture meant. You know, no, I understand what it really means. God said, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Another scripture that I've come to love in 2020 also is the book of uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20, where it says, believe in the Lord and you will be established. Believe in his prophets and you will prosper. Another scripture that I love in 2020, I call it 2K20, 2 Kings chapter 20, where there's a man, a king called Ezekiah. Ezekiah was ill. And, and the man of God, Isaiah, came to him and said, get your house in order because you're sick and you shall die and not live. But the man of God turned his back to the wall by faith and said, God, remember what I did. Remember this. Remember how I walked righteously in your sight. You can turn to God in this pandemic. You can turn your face to the wall and say, God, remember my children. Remember my husband. Remember my finance. Remember my spirituality. Remember, Lord. Remember, Lord. I'm praying, God, that my spiritual life will not die, but you will resurrect my spiritual life. But this morning, starting this morning and going onwards and until this year ends, we're not going to take any prayer requests over the phone. I'm only taking testimonies. So from the beginning of January, if you have been listening to this program from January, or maybe you just started listening to this program today, and maybe there's a blessing, you know, in disguise. God has blessed you tremendously just by listening to this show week in, week out. How has it impacted your life? That's what I really want to hear tonight. You know, my friends always call me. I always look forward to hear from my friend you know, over there in St. Mary, she knows her name. I don't have to call her name, but she knows her name. I look forward to hearing from you, but I want to hear testimonies. I want to hear how this program has impacted your life. I want you to ask questions about what my guests spoke about, not calling and saying, oh, we need prayer. The prayer has been prayed a while ago and God has heard your request. He knows what's in your heart. The Bible says, if you delight in the Lord, then he will give you the desires of your heart. So God knows your heart. You can speak that request right there in your home. You can shout it out loud and say, God, I want you to do this for me and it will be done. Signed, sealed, and delivered. So I really want to hear from you. The number is to call 968-8327 or 968-8328. I'm really going to observe the phone lines tonight because normally when it's prayer requests, these phone lines are buzzing. So I want you to call tonight and buzz these lines with those testimonies, how this program has impacted your life. And of course, Love 101 in general. I really want to hear from you. The number is to call 876-968-8327 or 876-968-8328. This is Love 101, the family station. Stay tuned. <laughs> 